And this is Channel 2 News. Boom! I'm Seymour. Seymour Butts. Howdy, y'all. This is Stanley Cook. I'm Barbie Doll. And I'm your anchor, Ron Burgundy. Good evening, everybody. My name is Ron Burgundy. Today, I'm going to tell you a little something, something about the first president. The first day after Washington made his trip from Virginia to New York, Washington takes his oath on April 30th. He is very anxious, but this new country has many issues from the Articles of Confederation. They are divided, and this new nation will depend on Washington's many decisions. Now, our co-anchor, Barbie Doll, will tell you a little something, something about Hamilton's financial plan. Thanks, Barbara. Barbara Doll here. Alexander Hamilton is a very important man in this new government. He has agreed that the U.S. will pay all of its state and federal debts. It will charter a national bank, and the government will impose a high tax on imported goods. Although Southerners opposed the plan to repay debts, the plan was was still passed by Congress. The national bank was also established, but the tariff was not passed by Congress. Now to Stanley with the Whiskey Rebellion. Thank you, Barb. The Whiskey Rebellion was provoked by high taxes on whiskey to raise funds for the Treasury. Various Pennsylvanians thought this was unfair and decided to riot, burning down the tax collector's home and forming a mile in Pittsburgh. Washington responded quickly, sending militia to the Pennsylvania. Once word of the 13,000 militia came to stop them, got, got to the mile, they broke up and scattered. Washington then parted the leaders in the rebellion. This rebellion tested the new government, and Washington's reaction showed that rebellion was not to be tolerated in the Back to you, Mr. Burgundy. Are you feeling tired or weak? Do you feel lightheaded? Is your body not functioning right? Slipping in and out of consciousness. If you're having one or all of these symptoms, then it's probably because you're not breathing. 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 Breathing is the number one way to stay alive. Breathing is a safe and effective way of preventing death and death related symptoms. But don't take my word for it. Listen to these testimonies. Okay, I've been breathing for a minute and I've already done. Try breathing today. Barbara began, I'm going to tell you something about the Alien Sedition Act. Federal spirit of French immigrants supporting Republicans. They decided that to restore order, they must destroy their political opponents. Congress passed the Alien Act in 1798, aimed at immigrants and the Sedition Act in 1798. Targeted at Republicans, the Alien Act, making the duration of 14 years to become a citizen. The, the Sedition Act made it illegal for anyone to write or say anything. Insulting about the government during their hardest act. Ten people were convicted. Most were Republican writers. Back to you. Thanks, Barbara Dahl. And now to see you. The charter of George Washington was a great thing. He was one of our, he was our first and one of, will be one of the great presidents. He had four major accomplishments as a president. The United States now has a functioning federal government that he helped set up. Our economy is improving. He avoided war with Britain. But he also forced Britain to leave their force in the Northwest Territory in an area that was not safe for settlement. There are still political divisions and many challenges, but he had a great presidency. Thanks, Seymour. And now it's Thank you, Ron. Now in the election of 1796, George Washington may have been the first president to seek three terms decided not to in 1796. This caused an election between the two political parties. Thomas Jefferson ran for the Democratic Republican Party, while John Adams ran for the Federalist Party. Unlike today, when the president and vice president run together, the second candidate ended up vice president. In the end, John Adams was the second president of the United States of America, with Jefferson as his vice president. Back to you, Brian. Thank you, Stanley. Ron Burgundy here, again, going to tell you about the birth of political parties. The political party used to be known as a faction. Factions were considered to be selfish groups, and the framers of the Constitution did not expect them to rise. Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton were the original leaders 
of the Democratic and Republican and Federalist parties. George Washington wants to throw the political parties who destroy the best fabric of human government and happiness. The Democratic Republican Party favored state government, people having more power, and opposed national bank. However, the Federalist Party favored central government, the national bank, and wealthy leading the nation. The difference between these two parties made them destined to be separate parties like Washington warned against. Thanks, Ron. Seymour Butts here with about the Treaty of Greenville. In 1790, Washington sent a small force to stop the Native American attacks on the settlers. It failed, so the next year Washington sent another force, but it also failed. So Washington turned to Revolutionary War hero and Great General Anthony Wayne to lead his forces in August of 1794. Wayne won a major victory at the Battle of Fallen Timbers. This broke the hold of the Native Americans, and it also forced the Treaty of Greenville in 1795, which the Native, in which the Native Americans gave up their lands from the Ohio River in the south to Lake Erie in the north. This was a major victory for the, this new nation. That's about all for us today. We'll see you guys tomorrow from Channel 2. Oh, wait, hang on. Just got breaking news that two prisoners have escaped from a local prison. Y'all better be on the lookout. We'll see you tomorrow on Channel 2.